Let's talk today about hand signals. A lot of people like to use hand signals, some people don't like to use hand signals. So let's address why hand signals and why not hand signals. For the most part, I do not like to use hand signals because if your dog is not looking at you, they can't obey. So people will always say, oh, your dog or this dog or whatever obeys hand signals and they find that really amazing because the dog can look at you and do what they're supposed to do. Remember, in the initial luring and shaping phases of training a dog, they're only going on hand signals, right? They're only going to do what you're kind of luring and shaping them to do, which is the signals from your hand. So for a dog to do hand signals or to obey hand signals isn't really that big of a deal. So in some sports, in some like uh, competitive obedience sports like AKC, dogs will be required to obey purely on a hand signal, also on the very, very first time. That's a big difference in doing the hand signal over and over and over again. So for the hand signal to be effective, the dog has to clearly know either the hand signal first and then be shaped into the verbal cue, or to know the verbal cue first and be shaped into the hand signal. So what I do is I lure and shape all the movements on the dog, or I should say the positions on the dog, from a luring and shaping and then adding in a vocal or verbal cue. Which would, be the, which would be the obedience command. Goofy, lie down. Then later, I'll add the hand signal. So for example, I'm gonna show you here with Goofy how he knows, Goofy here, here, stay. Right? So now just on a verbal cue, and I'm gonna discuss this piece of PVC in a second. Just on a verbal cue, I can tell Goofy, Goofy plots, Goofy sits, Goofy stay, back. Now he shouldn't be coming forward, so we're going to put this, we're going to make this a little more effective. Goofy, come here. Wait. Good. Good. Goofy, stay. So stay is stand. I'm using German commands. Then Goofy, plots. Good. Goofy, sits. Good. No sits. See, he's anticipating the next movement, which I don't want him to do. Goofy, stay. Back. Goofy, plots. Good. Goofy sits, so there's absolutely no it sits, no sits, there's no hand signal. I'm also keeping the dog on a flexi lead. As you'll see by my other videos, I don't like flexi leads for walking dogs, but I really do like them for training. I'm going to discuss that with you today. So the dog knows clearly, I can stand this way and say, Goofy stay, Goofy plots, Goofy stay, Goofy plots, and he knows that as far as the obedience and the routine of what I'm asking for and what he's giving me, right? That's really, really important. So in order to, we've discussed this before. So I've gone into how to teach the dog these movements. There's, uh, there's tons of videos on my site, on my YouTube channel, and my Facebook page, and all these different places where how, where you'll learn how to teach your dog those basic movements through luring and shaping. And I'm sure I'll do more in the, in the future. But today I want to address how to get a hand signal into this picture, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a reward um, to lure the movement in the beginning. And again, here I'm going to use food to lure the movement because I don't want to use a toy because it's going to break up the movement too much. So what I can do here, let me sh show you what the hand signal are as I go. Because if I do them without Goofy knowing it, he's going to get confused. So I'm going to take and use my right hand and I'm going to teach him the sit hand signal, which is going to be back, right? Plots, right? So I'm going to take the treat and I'm going to go this way and I'm going to go sit, yes, and I'm going to give it to him, right? Good boy. Goofy, lie down. And I'm just going to keep this real casual. I'm going to take the treat and my hand signal is going to be this, right? So I'm going to do this and he should go up. Sit, good. So I put the verbal cue and the hand signal together at this point. So even if he doesn't know the hand signal, he knows the verbal cue. Good, lie down. So if I say, Goofy, sit, and he knows this hand signal is coming, he's going to, sorry, if, if I do this and he hears the verbal, he's gonna follow the verbal. So the more, lie down, the more I can teach him that the verbal and the hand signal are together, Goofy sits, yes. The more he's gonna follow that, right? Down, lie down, good. So now this time, no, lie down. So now he's anticipating that a sit is gonna come, but I don't want him to do it before I do the hand signal. So my right hand is very still. 
I'm going to this time just, nope, lie down. Uh, he has to do it on the cue. So here I'll go, hey, yeah, good boy. And he did it, right? Lie down. He's watching the hand. Nope, nope, lie down. He's not allowed to do it till the hand moves. And this is real normal. So you're gonna see your dog start to predict what's about to come and try to do it, and you don't want that. So you're gonna always have to correct the dog. It's really good to see Goofy doing this. He's gonna help you understand it better that if I now go, yeah, good boy, he has to wait for that hand signal. Lie down, right? Now remember, the hand signal's gonna be different. Right now I'm pointing to the ground and telling him to lie down, but that's not gonna be the hand signal. So here, nope. Nope, lie down. He has to wait. Hand hasn't moved. When the hand moves, he has to keep his eye on me. Yes, right, he gets the reward. Good, lie down. So we'll do it again. Yeah, good boy. Now I can add distance to this if I have this, the flexi leash. I'm also gonna use this piece of PVC and what I'm gonna teach the dog here, this is kind of a two component piece, is I'm gonna teach him this is leave it leave it so see him backing up away from it i may even say come on and i may even tap him on this paw with it and make sure he knows this is an aversive right this is you're not allowed to touch this because what i don't want the dog to do is to crawl forward in his movements and that's real normal as i increase distance for the dog to try to come up to you so i'm going to say no leave it good boy and that little tap will teach him okay i'm not allowed near that so now i can tell him goofy stay and I'm going to have this here, good boy, right? He understands, don't go near that. We don't have to make it hard, gentle tap. This is a leave it, right? Come here, good, wait. So now he should know that not to cross over that. So if I'm further away now, here, now I add the command, good boy, yeah, good boy. Right? I don't want to start releasing him to me. I don't want to say yes and have him jumping over this just yet. This is the aversive. This is what I don't want him to go over. So again, this video is covering two topics. One is how to keep the dog in place, and two is how to add the hand signal to it. Good. Goofy, stay. Good. So here, I'm going to do it again. He's not going to go over that because that's the aversive. I'm going to add a little more distance. And here, I'm actually going to give him a little tug on this leash. Good. Good. He waits. Good boy, and he gets his reward. And now what I might even do here in this kind of situation is tell him wait, and I would add something different. Grab some cheese, and what I wanna do here is I wanna do something I've done in other videos and I get a lot of questions about, which is releasing the dog behind himself, right? So here, nope. See how he lifted his paw? He knows he's not allowed to go over that line. Good. And for those people who say, oh, it's, it's really negative to put that aversive on to tap the, to the dog on the toe with a piece of PVC, um, snowflakes like that can't really train a dog. You have to have some aversive. The dog has to understand that there's an implication to doing something wrong. Wait. So here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Add some distance. I'm gonna give him a little gentle tug and I'm gonna give him the, the cue here. I'm gonna actually move, and he's still holding the stand. Good. Now what I wanna do here is throw the treat behind him. Good boy. So he starts to think, okay, I don't have to come forward to get the treat from dad. I can get it from behind him. That's really important, right? Good, we'll do it one last time. Here. I've got the treat. It would be normal for him to now come get it, but since I'm releasing him behind him, he doesn't always go get it, right? So here, good boy.